guys and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about the Big Maple Leaf heist, which is a heist that happened in Berlin in 2017 where three men successfully stole a gold coin worth four million dollars. If you've never heard of it, you're gonna love this. This one is more lighthearted than the other crime cases I talk about, so let's get started. A little bit of background on this coin before we get started. So this massive gold coin is actually part of a set of six coins worth $1 million each that were made by the Royal Canadian Mint back in 2007. They weigh 100 kilos each. They are 99.99% pure gold. And they actually did enter the Guinness World Record book for the unrivaled purity of gold and also it being one of the biggest coins on the planet. And just to give you an idea of the size, so you're thinking 100 kilos of gold, what size does that look like? It's about 53 centimeters wide by three centimeters thick. It's not, it's not as big as you think it is. 50 centimeters probably like this big. The head side of the coin is the effigy of Queen Elizabeth II, which was actually designed by Susanna Blunt. Susanna Blunt is a widely acclaimed artist who has won many competitions to have her portrait designs featured on coins. And the one she designed there was actually used for the 2003 coin in Canada. And this is actually the first portrait of Elizabeth II that does not show her with a tiara or a crown on as per the queen's request. So I just thought that was really interesting. And the tail side of the coin was actually designed by Stanley Witten, who's actually worked for the Royal Canadian Mint since the 90s. He's like a senior engraver there, but he's designed quite a few different coins for them as well. I thought that was a little bit of a, an interesting background. I always, you never think about the fact that actually someone did design the heads or tails that's on your on your coin but the tail side of this coin is just maple leaves they're gorgeous the original coin that was made by the royal canadian mint is in storage in ottawa and then they did make five others just as part of a collection so only the one the original one is part of the royal canadian mint the other ones are just made for art purposes um, and were sold to private individuals one of them being boris fuchsmann who is the owner of the coin that ended up getting stolen in Berlin in 2017. But let's fast forward to March 27th, 2017, in the middle of the night where the coin gets successfully stolen. The police gets called the next day after receiving a report of a stolen coin, thinking it was just gonna be one of the small coins in the collection, not realizing until they get there that the coin missing is actually 53 centimeters wide and weighs 100 kilos. Now, the coin that was stolen was lent to the museum in 2010 by Boris, who owned the coin, and was just very passionate about it. He let the museum have it for a couple of years, and by 2017, it was actually worth four million Canadian dollars in gold alone. But as you can tell from the dimensions I've just given you, this is not exactly a coin you sneak into your pocket and out of a museum, so how did this happen? Now, since the coin weighs 220 pounds, it's on the third floor of a museum, police believe that the heist involved a wheelbarrow, a skateboard, and also a ladder. And overall, that does make it sound like a very low-tech heist, <laughs> like a wheelbarrow, a skateboard, and a ladder. But when you think about the fact that this is a massive coin, it makes sense to use things like a wheelbarrow anything to roll the coin out without actually having to carry it because it's just so heavy. And the craziest part being that the Bode Museum in which the coin was stored is on an island. So this low-tech heist is actually one of the craziest heists in the recent years. Like I, I haven't heard anything like that before. Although this is a heist and the entire story of this heist is just fascinating to me, it is still a crime. They still stole something that doesn't belong to them. And very obviously, the police needed to find who had done this. So between 3.20 and 3.50 a.m. on March 27th, 2017, three men broke into the museum. They actually made their way into the museum through a staff changing room on the third floor. The police believe they used a ladder as a bridge to enter and break into that window. They made their way to the coin, which was protected by bulletproof glass, but they managed to smash their way through that glass get the coin, roll it back to the staff changing room, back out that window, 
where they believe they pushed it out of the window, fell on the train tracks because they found dust particles, gold dust particles on the tracks and then wheeled it out of there to a getaway car. Now this is the type of heist you hear about in movies and if you're wondering, it's 2017, how does someone or anyone make it into a museum that keeps a coin that valuable or anything this valuable or any museum in general without triggering any alarms? You're right to ask yourself that, but no alarms were triggered, so police is very suspicious about how that happened. This must have been an inside job. So police start looking into the security staff and find out about Dennis W. They don't give you, I couldn't find the full name, but Dennis W. who had only started working there a couple of weeks before and a few days after the heist was found looking at luxury cars and spending a lot of money on jewelry. This man is 18 at the time. He's a security guard for a museum. I mean, chances are you're not going to be searching for a luxury car while being a security guard at a museum. Either that or I'm in the wrong line of work. So they dig deeper into this Dennis guy and they find out that he is connected to the Remo clan. The Remo clan is basically a Lebanese organized crime family. It's like a massive family that is well known in Germany for organized crime. And this family actually includes Ahmed and Wissam. I hope I'm saying their names right. I'm really sorry if I'm not. They actually believe that Dennis was the one who helped Ahmed and Wissam break into the museum, which would make sense. I mean, you need someone from the inside to stop the alarm from setting off the second you break into the museum. Police did track down the getaway car and they found gold dust particles inside the car and also on their clothing. They went through Wisdom's phone and in the search history, they found out questions such as how to melt down big chunks of gold. And then when they made their way to Wissam's apartment, they found gloves with shards of glass that matched the glass of the window they broke into in the staff changing room. And there was also CCTV footage near the train tracks of someone wearing a very limited edition or a very rare Armani jacket, which they found in Wissam's apartment as well. Police ended up looking into the Remo family and searching properties and trying to get as much information as possible. And in one of the homes they were raiding, they did find counterfeit coins and also forgery tools that suggested that they were stealing gold and melting it down into forged collector's coins to sell for a profit, which is just so ironic because let's say this is like a forgery ring and they're faking these collector's coins. If you end up melting gold from a coin that's part of a collection such as the big maple leaf coin and you're melting it down to forge a collector's coin it's still a collector's coin you just don't know so it's like fake but it's still somehow <laughs> like i don't know does that make sense like i just thought that was quite ironic but they did look they did find evidence that there was some sort of forgery ring happening and they were melting out melting down gold to make these fake collector's coins. These three individuals, so Dennis, Wissam, and Ahmed went to trial and the trial ended in February 2020 where they were all sentenced to jail. Now, Dennis, who was the museum security guard, got sentenced to three years and four months while Ahmed and Wissam got four and a half years of prison. Now, the coin is still nowhere to be found. Upon Like they've searched all of, they've raided all of the properties connected to the Remo clan and they just could not find any trace of the full coin, but police do believe that it was broken down into smaller chunks and then either melted or just sold off, which would make sense. You would never keep, like this is not one coin that you could use for a purchase. It's so recognizable and it's worth more in gold than the actual coin itself as art. Does that make sense? So it would just make more sense to break it down into smaller chunks and melt it down. The last thing you would want is successfully pull off a heist of that nature and then leave it hanging in your living room and then the police come back and they're like, that's the coin, <laughs> give me back my coin. What's odd is like I did find an article in the Daily Mail and also like a whole YouTube video about how this coin had been allegedly found or police believe they found the coin. Police believed it had been melted into a 100 kilo gold bar instead of the coin so that the coin is so recognizable you would melt it into something else but this article had no proof of anything i find it so odd that someone actually made a video about this but 
it would make no sense to steal that coin and then melt it into a solid gold bar that you can't really do anything with. Like who's gonna accept a 100 kilo gold bar as payment? And also like people would just seem to forget that you need such a high temperature to melt gold. This is not like a small operation. You can't just put that coin in the oven in a big dish and just melt it down into a gold bar. That's just not how it works. So yeah, the coin is still missing. And I think police have just accepted the fact that it's been melted down. It's been broken down into smaller chunks and it's been most of it has probably been sold off by now, uh, which is really sad. Like, I, I think some people think, oh, well, it's just a coin and it's just gold and there's no victim because it wasn't like a physical injury or I don't know. It's just th this is still something that belonged to someone. It's worth a stupid amount of money. It's worth like four million Canadian dollars, probably more by now. And yeah, they still took something that had they had no business taking. It's absolutely not there. And the owner of the coin, Boris Fuchsman, did say that he was very upset about this just because that coin had a lot of emotional value on top of a lot of financial value. I just thought this entire heist in itself was fascinating, just the fact that they would break into a museum, grab a wheelbarrow, just like chuck the, chuck the coin onto the train tracks, put it in a wheelbarrow, run all the way to the car. It just seems so low tech, but like also just so high tech at the same time, like it just worked and I'm not like happy about it, but the whole heist in itself is just fascinating that they could just walk into a museum. Obviously it's kind of cheating if you have someone on the inside disabling the alarms, but you don't get to hear about a heist of that nature very often. So I just thought it was such an interesting case. Um, if you had never heard about this gold coin heist, let me know what you thought of this. Like, is this, is this crazy or what? Like if you had heard of it, what are your thoughts? Do you think it's been melted down? Do you think it's still somewhere? I think it would, they would have such a hard time getting rid of it if it was just still whole. Also, it, it was assumed to have been broken when they chucked it out of the window because no way no, someone was gonna like carry that in their arms on the way down. <laughs> they just threw it over. So anyway, let me go know what you guys think. This was a bit of a different case, kind of like lighthearted today. Let me know how you guys feel about these types of cases. I'll be back next week, back to some true crime. But if you like this, please comment down below. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you next week.